crazy. Let's bring our boy Philly 500 in. Magnum PI over here. What's going on, Sills? You were doing some investigative reporting? Well, I wanted to know how Frank dealt with the analytics inside the Eagle organization. And he said, basically, <laughs> they give the coaches the intel and all the information, and the coaches put the game plan together Based off the information it, yeah. they get. It's so the mm. coaches don't put their own information together. You're basically dealing with a whole separate coaching staff. Well, that would explain <laughs> why it's the same thing every week. Uh, you know, I think that would explain a lot, actually, why the game plan seems to be the same thing. Come out, throw, 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 and then try to run in the second half. It, it makes sense. Uh, sounds about right. Man. All right, let's – we'll get to that here in a couple minutes. <laughs> Takeaways from the 49ers. Oh, man. Uh what a beaten. It is a beaten. You know, um, they beat us all phases of the game. What bothered me more about that game, to be honest with you, it wasn't even that we lost or it wasn't the X of the O's. I feel like the Eagles were not mentally ready for that game. I don't feel like they were intense coming into that game. Maybe it's fatigue, like you said, but the 49ers, they come to the stadium wearing dressed in all black, right? They came dressed in all black for a funeral. It's kind of like reminding me of you and your Hurricanes getting off the plane in army fatigue, right? So that's to me a statement. Then in warm-ups, they're bothering James Bradbury. None of the Eagle players are, are looking at this, even going up and helping him or, or helping him out. And it was like they came in bullied. I, I feel like the, the Eagles were not – did not understand the way the 49ers were looking at this game. And I don't think, I don't think mentally we even went into that game um, with the same feeling that the 49ers did. That bothered me more than anything about this game. I said all week that you had no shot to win. And the only reason I said that was because of the amount of high quality teams and games and comebacks that you guys have been playing in. And when you saw even Kelsey with two illegal procedures, then you saw the way he got killed. Javon Hardgrave killed him. And mm -hmm. it it just, look, they had mm -hmm. eight, the first eight, 19 of that game. I was doing this, Philly. Holy shit. Flying right. around. They had eight minutes worth of football in them. And after that, it was a, yeah. the game was not competitive after eight, 19. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you very well could be right. I mean, it could it could be they were just really tired. Um, I get it. I totally get it. Um, but I I did not feel and and even when we were up six nothing, I was saying during my stream, I was saying I don't know this defense. They just don't look they don't look juiced up to me. Like the, the feel I was getting, like they were just kind of going through the motions. And I was literally saying that it was six nothing, and then yeah, it's, that's exactly what happened. I you feel like the, the Eagles. Got... Well, I feel like they woke up. I feel like they woke up and realized they were in a fight when they cheap shot at Devontae Smith. When 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 he, he hit Devontae Smith out of bounds, and then Big Dom got involved. I feel like that was the point. The Eagles were like, "Oh, all right, you." It's like that, you know. But it was a little too late by then. But that's what I felt. I I think Big Dom was our MVP. I, I would say this to you. Look what the national media is doing to Big Dom. I think he, now I did hear something that he was John with Greenlaw prior to the game, and oh, it, really? it kind of carried over. So trust me when I tell you, Philly five hundred. When I see the Goomba Italian flag on his deal, I see the guy in the all black. I don't right. know, man. Big Sills, Big Dom, Big Philly five hundred. I kind of like it. <laughs> I do too. I can't help it. <laughs> I just I like the guy, but I I I don't feel like I don't feel like from a, a standpoint of of like being intense or taking it as a playoff game or taking it the way I I said this in my in my video I thought that the Eagles came in to play a football game and the Niners came in for war, 
and and I thought that they they pushed them. I mean, just they were pushing them around. They pushed Jalen Hurts out of bounds. Nobody went up and and stood up for Jalen Hurts. They just looked like they were going through. And it was like when Devontae got cheap shot, it was like they all kind of it seemed like they came alive a little bit. And then the defense went back out there and they couldn't stop anything. So at that point, it was over. Do you think it would? You think the Eagles were exposed, or this is a one of? I think it's a more of a one of. Now I'm not saying that the 49ers would have won the game, and I'm not saying that in the future they can't win the game. But I don't think that the Eagles. I don't think it'll be like that next time. I think the Eagles will take this game a lot differently. What was the most surprising thing for you that came out of that Sunday game? The the bullying. I I just don't expect the Eagles ever to be bullied uh at home, you know. And then besides that, on the field, in terms of on the field, six straight possessions that they score touchdowns, first time since nineteen fifty-four. I mean, I, I can't remember a game. I wasn't alive in nineteen fifty-four. I don't remember ever seeing that where they just it was just like and you knew the Niners were gonna score a touchdown. It wasn't even a thought in your mind. That they would stop him. Uh, that that was bad. Why was Nick Sirianni, when it was 42 to, what was it, 42 14 or something? Jalen Hurts is still in the ball game. Um, he's still in the ball game, and you have him there in the ball game at 519. Yeah. What, what, why are you? It just seemed – didn't the coaches and everything just seem out of whack in that game? All Nothing really was working, right? Yeah. It, it just – the whole week was weird to me because you had this team talking a bunch of crap, and I and I took it – I was taking it personal. But then you got A.J. Brown going, oh, Debo's a nice guy. He don't really need it. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, why would he say that, you know? Like, that was my thought process. And then – and then just the whole game, how how they kind of carried themselves, the play calls on the field. Uh, you're right. As soon as as soon as Jalen Hurts came back and went back in, and it was clear the concussion, I was like, "You got to get him back out. Why is he even in there? He almost had a concussion. You almost lost him for the Cowboys game. You're not winning without him." And then um, DeAndre Swift takes a shot with two minutes left in the game. Like, like I don't I don't know what they were thinking. To be honest with you, I don't get it. And I haven't even heard really anybody ask, ask good questions about this kind of stuff. I feel like there's just a bunch of softball questions going on. No, nothing that I even care about knowing. All the things I really want to know, we have to ask Frank Reich about. You know, I don't know because dude, I'm not getting it from them. Dude, when I found when I just found this out, how you guys do business. So here, here again. Here's the information I want you to use for the game on Sunday. Is that coaching? Right. No. No. Oh, I think I think it takes away a coach's feel for the game by doing that. You know, um, it. You know what? A coach is not now not going to go look at the tape of San Francisco and look at what they. By do the way, tape. I don't think this is just isolated. To yeah. Philly, I think these analytic no. guys are doing this across the league. Yeah, yeah, I think it's hurting the league in general. I mean, like that's even why if scoring's you, down. Yeah, even if you watch the, you know, like in game, like they go to their charts for the analytics. So this is down that you don't kick a field goal, you kick it here, or or you do you go for here. To me, it makes no sense. Like you, you've got to have a feel for a game for the, how the momentum's going. Like sometimes I could be like, why are they, they need to kick a field goal here? You're not going to get it. And you just know. Um, I think it's completely taken that out of the game. I have no issue with analytics if it's only like a part of what the coaches use. But when it's everything, it's bad. And let me tell you, I think analytics has killed us in some of these draft picks over the years, too, because um, they were using that to draft guys like Jalen Rager. Let me say this to you. Isn't it ironic? that John Lynch, the positions that he covets, running back and linebackers and safeties, were the one issue that Howie doesn't and his analytical team no. value. And those guys were completely without a doubt. By the way, the one thing that they did to uh, Greenlaw and while he was in there and Fred Warner, 
They completely abandoned the RPO, which froze yeah. those backers a year ago, and you made that defense even faster. Right. Yeah. I I, I don't get it. I mean, uh, I, during the broadcast, they were saying, yeah, every first down, the Niners are expecting the pass, looking going back uh, for playing the pass. And every first down, the Eagles were going to throw it. And it's like, I don't know. I, I, I It just makes no sense to me at this point. Um, I, I don't know. It's like, yeah, the Eagles are going to come out throwing and then they're going to try to run in the second half. That's the game plan every week. Doesn't matter who they're playing. It's always what they do. Always. Did that beating throw cold water on the Dallas week? I think it makes the Dallas week more important. Um, I think it I, – I, I don't feel that. But you don't sound as confident. Well, we're talking about the 49ers game. We're not talking about the Dallas game yet, you know. Oh, you're no, getting, no, okay. You're okay, living in history. You see, my problem with Dallas is if you're thinking that you are the same team as that team in the Bay Area, right. you're out right. of your mind. <laughs> I agree. I, I agree. It's not the same team. And, and, and the great <clears> thing about the Cowboys is – they have a beautiful history of believing their own hype. And now that they've had 10 days off to hear how great they are, I expect the, I expect the Eagles – I think the Eagles are going to go in there and, and beat them. I do. And I think it will be a close game, a good game, but um, I don't think they're the same team. And my hope is, is that this kind of allows the Eagles to finally make some adjustments that maybe some of these coordinators probably have wanted to make for a while. So I, I hope that's the case, but I, I you know I don't think we're losing two games in a row. How about know? this? And this this is what the funny and maybe ironic thing is with how the cowboy the cowboys think they have you guys in a down thing. And I went like this. I mean, would you agree with me, Philly, that that the Eagles probably played a C plus B minus game against Dallas? Yeah. They played one good quarter. And and Dallas played, played an quarter. A plus game and still yeah. lost, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe a C plus game that the Eagles. So you're if you're Dallas, you're hoping that the Eagles play a D minus game for right. you to beat them. That's yeah. not really a game plan. They think they're the 49ers. That's the thing. They think they're just as good as the 49ers. They seem to forget the beating they took. Um, to the 49ers as well. I, you know, I, uh, Seattle should have beat them. Yes. I mean, if, yes. If, if Seattle if, put 30 Lock, on them and Geno Smith almost had a perfect quarterback rating. Lockett dropped the ball late in the fourth quarter. That yep. would have been a third, first down of the third the game was over and he dropped it. So, you know, they weren't super impressive. I think their defense is easily, um, able to, you're able to score them. We've done pretty well against Parsons in the past. Um, if the Eagles make the proper adjustments, I think they could go in there and beat them. Uh, Jalen Hurts doesn't really usually lose two games in a row. However, I think the one thing that we could say is if the Eagles' defense is that bad, and I know that the Dallas Cowboys are going to move the ball, I know they're going to score points on us, then look at all the games we've won going into Kansas City, playing Miami, playing um, Buffalo. How is Jalen Hurts not the MVP when he doesn't have a, any defense to help him? He's Excuse me? literally carrying us on his own. He's no longer in the. He's no longer. He's in not the even league. in the race. He's not in the race, right? But if Dak Prescott loses by fourteen points and throws two touchdowns, he'll be. He'll. They'll tell you what a great losing performance it was. It's such a joke to me. Here, here. Let me let me let me give you the exact numbers here. Here are the guys that are the leading candidates right now for the most valuable player award in National Football League. And to your point, he's beaten Dak, and he's beaten Mahomes. He's beaten Tua. Tyree Kill's on this list. They shut his ass down. And so here, Brock Purdy is plus 300. He is the number one along with Dak is back. <laughs> How is that possible? I don't you know. Trip, it, you stub your toe one time. Like you said, if you guys go on a three-game losing streak, I'm with you. I'm going to go, hey, you know, okay. 
the picks and yeah. turnovers. It's just not meant to be this year. But you guys had eight. You're ten and freaking two. Ten and two. You'd think we're two and ten by the way they talk. You know, and these media guys, every week it's the same thing. Well, the Eagles don't do this, and the Eagles are that, and this. And then every week they're wrong, and then they get one week they're right. And it's like, see, we told you all along. It's all a bunch of, eh, you know, bunch of garbage, as my dad would say. I don't Dakota Prescott. Dakota Prescott. <laughs> I, I saw that game. I couldn't believe it. I watched Jalen Hurts in the second quarter on the ground, dragging himself across the field, trying to get off, limping, limping. Comes in the third quarter, carries the team. Then Dak Prescott, three si times inside the 10, can't score touchdown. Uh, in a losing performance, Dak Prescott looks like an MVP candidate. Did I just hear what they said? Like, there's no way this is possible. That's some satanic black magic voodoo. <laughs> that they're putting out there, them Satan, those Satan lovers in Dallas. You think they beat them in Dallas? I, I think it's a tough game. We haven't done well against them in a while in Dallas. But at the same time, I just don't know. It's the way the Eagles lost and the way that they played. It's, but it's very the hard, for... dude. You're not going to run into a no. team like that until the <laughs> NFC title game. No, I, I, I agree with you. But but in the Eagles' mind and the way and the pride that that team has, I don't think that they feel they played a good game at all. And I don't feel that they're going to come in to the Cowboys game. And I, I just think they're going to take it to another level. Uh, because that, that was an embarrassing loss. It was humiliating. Whether, you know, the 49ers are just the best team right now or not, the Eagles – they, they, I'm telling you, they were not, they were not in the same mindset as the 49ers going in that game. So they I, I, I got to tell you something, man. I was so wrong about one guy. This kid, Devontae. Hey, by the way, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to say something so positive about him in a minute, but I want to say one thing about that Ayuk kid. Mm -hmm. That kid Ayuk, you think CD Lamb's better than him? No. If we're being honest, no. That I think kid is Lamb. some ball player. I mean, he's a hell of a he might be a little bit, maybe, maybe, okay? But that kid, he might be the best two in the league. Yeah, he's good. Now, Waddle, I mean, Waddle good. and uh, Tyreek down in Miami is probably the kid up in Seattle with, along next to DK. Those guys are good too. But, dude, Ayuk's, he shocked me how good he is. Yeah, he's good. He's very talented. Um, I remember a few years, his rookie year, he jumped over some one of our players. I said, oh, yeah. man, this kid's going to be good. I, I, I like him. Um, you know, but they got a lot of weapons. But, I mean, Dallas puts C.D. Lamb in a slot, and, and it's pretty much that's who they go to most of the time. Uh, they don't really have anybody else, um, which, you know, I don't understand why the Eagles don't come up with a better game plan this time for C.D. Lamb. But who knows? Um, hey, but I'll Devontae you, Smith's well, a stud. I don't mind him getting his yards. No, he, you can't have I, I Brandon. Mean. You can't have Brandon Cook and my, Michael Gallup going off, or that kid Ferguson. Because I'll tell you something. One thing you learned out of that game, boy, they struggled covering tight ends. Hoss, they had no oh, yeah, all year. Kittle. It was a, all it, year. it was embarrassing. I know it was. I I really you know, I I I know the 49ers, The Forty ers had that game circled. They were thinking about the game. They were talking the trash. And I don't even – I don't – I can't blame Debo Samuel. I don't care. You talk it and then you walk it. I, I'm okay with it. Like, that's fine. That's that's it. You, they backed it up. And um, I don't think the Eagles were – I don't think they were on the same level going into that game when that game started. I don't think they took the game the same way. And I don't think they're going to get that embarrassed again. I think they're going to be pissed off. And I think that Dallas would have been better off the Eagles losing like 24-21. You know what I mean? Like a game like that. Not a game like this. So I, I think the Eagles are going to win. But I think it's going to be a, a close game. I, I, I want everyone to know. I don't, I don't think Ayuk is better than Devontae. I just, I, I just oh. think this kid oh, is better Devontae than Oh, Devontae Smith think. was one of the guys I think that he's better than CD. Play. Yeah, I agree with you. And okay, I, that's I, why I, I said he's better than but. Yeah. I'll tell you something about, about Devontae. You know, for a frail, built guy, looking at least, when he, you know, when Xander, Xander, first question he asked me when I came to work at Jacob, would you make it a pick? I go, he's a shwimp. I go, the guy's a shwimp. 
right? He, he he's he's a finesse receiver. That guy's not a finesse receiver. No. He catches footballs in, in tough places. He's got phenomenal hands. He runs exceptional routes. I'll yeah. tell you something, man. He is he, he's a really good player, and he's yeah. a tough player for the way in his stature, the way he's built. I agree. And everybody said he wouldn't last. He hasn't missed the yeah. game yet. You know, I, I he, that's why he's probably my favorite player on the team because, uh, you know, he's counted out from the beginning, but I like him a lot. Last one here for you. What about James Trashberry and Paper Mache Slay? Are you concerned about them going into the game? I'm, I'm always concerned about, about the secondary going in. It's not <laughs> just them. It's the whole secondary. I'm concerned about, you know, because if listen, if you're rushing four and not getting pressure, and then every once in a while you maybe rush five and you're not getting pressure. Like you, you you've got to do more than that. Like I never understand when a guy like Purdy's in a half and he's 12 of 15 or something like that. Like at what point do you say we gotta get this guy out of rhythm? We've got to do something. If you let Dak Prescott sit in the pocket and take those easy passes underneath, he's gonna eat you up all day. And it's just gonna be the same thing. So yeah, I'm very worried about. <laughs> Give me yes. G- give me a score though. Give me give me a score for this Cowboy game. That you're you, you're obviously going to wait to the end of the week, but kind of where you're around. I, I I'm around. I'm somewhere around 34, 31, 34, 30, 30, 27. I I think it's on the higher scoring side because I think both defenses won't be able to stop the offense, and I think it'll come down to who makes the mistake in the fourth quarter. I'm with you, man. I think this thing, look. You're, get this, your second game in a row, you're underdogs. You know that. Yeah, you're now yeah. three and a half yeah. point underdogs. Yeah. And and they need this, Sills, because they've got a they, yep. they've got a one game lead. And I think that if there's one team that needs a bye week, it's us. Uh the other teams are not nearly as banged up. This Eagles need that bye week. So if you can win this game, really, if you can win the next two games, you'll win, you'll wind up with it because those final three games are easy. But this is the game that's tough because if Dallas wins, I'm not worried about the division. We'll still win the division, but you're going to give up that number one seat. So I still win think San Fran could drop that Ravens game. That's the only one that that is possible, you know. But you never know. You Rams. never know. You, you never know. But I, you know, best way to do it is just is just stay one game ahead of them. So just got to go beat Dallas. <laughs> The cow frauds. Dude, this is what know, I tell it, Dallas. They just never go Prove away. it. Prove right. it. Dude, don't, dude, look at this. Look at it. You got a chance here to do something you haven't done in 28 years. You know what that is? Win a big game. Right. This is the, this is it. one of the biggest games they've had in a long time. Right. Well, I could tell you why. If, if they do pull this game off – that almost guarantees they lose in Buffalo because they will think that they're the greatest thing to slice bread and they will end up giving us the division. That's what happened with Watt last year. They go into Washington and got whooped. Um, you know, I hate this. Hey, dude, Boy, I'm I more worried this. about San Fran than I am than I am yeah. Dallas. Shit, I'm more worried about Detroit than I am right. Dallas. Dallas yeah. is going to drop two more. Yeah, they're going to drop. They two can't more. help themselves, even if they I agree. beat you. Yeah, I agree that they're going to drop two more. But the problem is, is, is we're talking about being then the number two seed. That's I, I really feel like in my heart we we got to have that one seed because uh, we're just so banged up, you know, and we need that rest. And it would have been nice to be San Francisco and get this thing locked up soon, but. That didn't happen. So, you know, San Francisco, look, they look really good right now. They look tough to beat. But, you know, as you said the other day, um, that's it's December right now. It's not January. A lot of things can change, you know, in a month. And and listen, it is December. So this is when the Cowboys begin their choke season. So it's here and it's coming. It's just a matter of when. Yeah, this is the Cowboys preseason now. <laughs> In December, they start playing preseason ball in December, yeah. and that's yeah. why they look like that's why they look like the team that they look like every year, and that's yeah. why they're playing golf in the Bahamas. Yeah, come February, <laughs> they they had all they had ten days to, to to listen to how great they are. 
That's and I guarantee you they've been listening to all of it since they beat Seattle. We so got him. We got Philly. We got Philly. Watch him get right. killed. Yeah, it's going to be glorious. I'll have my broom ready. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Philly, thank you, my friend. Thank you, my man. Take care. You got it, my dear friend, Philly 500. Make sure you check him out on his great show that he does each and every single week. I really love the guy, and I so love having him on. All right, hit the like button. We're going to reset. We're going to look at week 14. Rick Goslin. From the Dallas Morning News, Talk of Fame Network is going to join us at 5.30 Eastern. Big matchup, Cowboys and Eagles. We'll listen to him and get his take on what he sees with this 2023 Dallas Cowboy team. Keep it here on the National Football Show. Hooters, the perfect pair.